What's up guys, it's Marius from Audio Judgment and today we are going to test out some measurement techniques because people have disagreements about how you should place your speaker when you measure the TS parameters. And that is a valid concern you should have, agreed. If you ask me what is the correct way to measure the speaker, I do have my way of doing it, but uh, what is the best way? Let's do some research. Ah, yes, the Audio Engineering Society, where if you are a member, you have access to their library and surely we will find the answer here. So let's do, let's do a broad search, parameter measurement and see what we got. Dynamic measurement using a harmonic control technique. Interesting. Optimal material parameter estimation by fitting finite element simulations. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Clearly, we're not going to find the, the answer here because no one wants to make a paper on how to do a basic measurement of a speaker. If you're interested in how to measure a speaker with the blue lasers and while the economy is having a bull run, then you might find something. But let's not get discouraged and uh, I have another idea. Let's go and have a look at the number one company which makes speaker measurement equipment. Clipple. Ah, the measurement equipment that no one can afford. Not even some speaker building companies. Let's see how they measure their speakers. They place the speaker on this stand, which is basically some uh, rectangular aluminum profiles that form this vice looking thingy. Now I don't need the measurement equipment because I have my own, I just need the stand. Can't be that expensive, right? So I found this price list from Clipple, which is from 2019. So I'm guessing the prices will be a bit higher since a lot of inflation is going on. Unfortunately, the prices don't include any taxes, transportation, so we're gonna factor that uh, in as well. So let's search for the Pro Driver Stand. And... Uh, you know what? I'm not really in the mood of buying this stand. Probably will take a lot of space in my room anyway. So what's the plan? The plan is that uh, we're going to do the most common methods and we're going to compare them to one another. It's going to be tough deciding which one is the best. However, if we get similar results to all of them, then that's an easy conclusion to draw. First method is the one where you place the speaker on the table. Just use uh, something to elevate the speaker from the table. I'm using some erasers. The point is to stop the speaker from rattling uh, against the table and to not obstruct the vented pole piece if there is one present. This one does have a hole, but that is not actually a vented pole piece. In fact, this method was presented by Dayton Audio in a tutorial video for the DATS V2, the older model. Instead of erasers, they suggested books, if I remember correctly. I can't find the video, so I can't confirm. The next method is with the help of a vise. This vise can be firmly secured to the desk and most importantly is made out of non-ferrous materials. I'm using this magnet wand to check if it sticks to the vise and there is no attraction except for this uh, threaded rod over here but that will go under the desk uh, far away from the speaker. The idea is not to influence the magnetic field of the speaker. And the obvious advantage of this setup is that the speaker will sit perfectly still while it's playing the measurement sweep. Next, we have this funny one. Hold the speaker in your hand while doing the measurement. I just want to do this for fun. I don't recommend this because you can't keep your hand perfectly still and you might corrupt the measurement. However, I've seen people saying that this is the way they measure their speakers and I want to try it out. Finally, we are going to use the strap. Um, I've seen people do this method uh, where they strap the speaker to a wooden object, use a ratchet system to tightly secure the speaker in place. 
This one is the closest to the clipple stand mount thingy, as the speaker is sitting upright. There is another method, which people argue it's better than the rest, the one when you place the speaker on an open baffle. The argument is that you are measuring the speaker in the same position and mounting conditions, exactly like when the speaker will be placed in a box. I didn't want to do this one because it's kind of a hassle and no one will do this just to measure a speaker, but I changed my mind and I did it anyway in the name of science. What concerns the measurement for VAS, we are going to use both the added mass method and the closed box method. Just to reiterate the procedure, get some blue tack, roll it up in a circle, make sure to weigh it with the precise scale and don't forget that number. We're going to stick the blue tack to the cone as evenly and as circular as possible. Regarding the closed box, we need to know the exact internal dimensions so we can calculate the internal volume. I'm also adding the volume of the cutout to this internal volume. Evidently, uh, write this number down. The speaker will be mounted with the magnet outside because we don't know how much volume the magnet will displace. And for good measure, I'm using some blue tack to make a good seal. Let's talk a bit about each measurement and then I'm going to show you the numbers. For the first method, it's pretty straightforward. Place the speaker on uh, the erasers and do all the necessary measurements. For the vise, make sure that the speaker is properly tightened and it's not moving whatsoever. Do all of the measurements, the hand thingy, whatever, repeat the measurements. And now for the strap. I strapped the speaker to a small box and I thought I got some weird results because they are obviously different than the rest of the techniques. So to eliminate any doubt, I got a larger subwoofer to serve as a large mounting object, use some damping tape where the speaker uh, sits on the box, and I got a heavy duty ratchet so I can torque this thing in place. Again, repeat all the necessary measurements. What concerns the baffle measurements? I made this contraption a three panel baffle. The idea was that it can sit on its own and it can add a bit of mass to it. Problem is that I got some resonances in the impedance response, placed some towels underneath, hoping that the resonances will go away but they actually moved to another frequency. As a last effort, I ditched the two side panels and hold the panel with my hand, still keeping the towels underneath, and it worked. No more wrinkles. Finally, we're done. Here are the results. I'm going to keep them like this for a second, if you want to judge them precisely. However, I'm going to round them up because it's easier to follow where the numbers are matching or almost matching. What concerns the FS and QTS, it basically doesn't make any difference what kind of method you use. Even when holding the speaker in your hand, there are some minor differences, but within the margin of error and can be considered negligible. Regarding VAS, when it comes to the added mass method, things starts to change when the speaker is in the upright position. So for the first three measurements, VAS is pretty consistent, then it starts to bump up in value. However, when it comes to the closed box method, it looks like it's pretty consistent uh, across the board. I know for a fact that the closed box uh, method is much more accurate than the added mass method, as long as you make an airtight box. When it comes to the added mass, it depends how well you spread the added mass and how well it sticks to the cone. In addition, some cones are quite fragile depending on the material they are made of and don't allow for rough handling and sticking stuff to it. What's the conclusion? Judging by the numbers, the conclusion is that it's better to use the closed box method for determining VAS and doesn't matter what method you use to determine the electrical parameters. What am I going to do? I'm still going to place the speaker on erasers and use the added mass method. The results are accurate enough for me. Too lazy to build a box just to measure a speaker. Now that you have the numbers, you can decide for yourself whether it's worth your time to make a closed box just to measure a speaker. That concludes our video for today. I wish you successful and accurate speaker measurements and I'll see you next time. Peace.